Welcome to DNA Genotech's webinar on integrating the microbiome into your research. My name is Jamie Cornaldi and I'm part of the microbiome team here at DNA Genotech. So you may be asking yourself, what is the human microbiome? Well, the microbiome is the composition of bacteria in and on us. Uh, you could also look at it as the uh, ensemble of genomes that are inside our body. Um, it's a popular statement that our body contains 10 times more microbial cells than human cells, with the densest community living in the gut. There have been some new discoveries using metagenomic signatures of these bugs, uh, and these discoveries have been uh, in the GI and systemic diseases. There is also wide applicability beyond GI disorders uh, in publications characterizing its role in pregnancy, diabetes, liver disease, and general health and wellness. So the microbiome could also be a critical environmental factor in genetic studies, meaning host genomics and the gut microbiome could both influence metabolic phenotypes as observed in several lean and obese twin studies. The microbiome could be considered a newly discovered organism, or organ, sorry, that's involved in metabolism and immunity, among other things. It is also our most intimate environmental factor, contributing to the host's well-being. GWAS studies have shown success in identifying specific genomic regions contributing to the causation of certain diseases. However, there have been some disappointment that a large proportion of the heritability is unaccounted for. A new focus on environmental factors uh, must be placed in these cases, with the microbiome taking front as it's largely inherited at birth. Phenotypic information in the microbiome is also readily accessible and affordable. The framework for studying this, uh, this integration is uh, also well established. When we're thinking of the next study, uh, as a researcher, you want to optimize your workflow from end to end, beginning with recruitment, through collection, getting the samples back to the lab, and generating data for interpretation. There have been some difficulty in replicating the results from one study to the next. This is mostly attributed to the different sources of variability that must be considered, making microbiome research challenging. Each component introduces its own inherent bias and it's crucial to limit the source of variability, the various sources of variability. With this in mind, we wanted to create the ideal tool to allow, to allow you to minimize this variability and also to improve efficiency. Uh, improving efficiency through reducing transport costs uh, and most importantly allowing for a reliable profile uh, by creating a snapshot of the in vivo state. Now back to the full end-to-end -end integration. We refer to this as the omnigene value chain. So starting with pre-collection on this value chain, we wanted to completely eliminate the cold chain transport requirements. By doing so, you're able to significantly simplify shipping logistics, and there's no need to worry about procurement, in-house assembly, and traceability. Uh, and as you see on the slide, uh, you're comparing a big box uh, with a slender envelope. So, when we look at the value chain again, collection goes hand in hand with stabilization. As you want to snapshot the sample at the moment of collection. This is the point where we hear the old adage, garbage in, garbage out. Also, in getting IRB approval, you need a method that is safe uh, and also safe to send home with patients for the in-house or at-home collections. We consider donor experience in the development of our tool as well, uh, where you're going to have parents 
infants, and the elderly doing the collections. You also want to be able to have repeat donors in the case of longitudinal studies. And with this, you have to ask what is the likelihood that they are willing to participate again? And as mentioned, a safe and easy to use self-collection method is key. That allows scalability. So when we look at the next slide, you, you have to have confidence that people are going to do the collection correctly, regardless of the type of sample they have produced. So when you look at the Bristol stool scale, there are samples that will be dry and samples that may be liquid. Uh, we've designed the kit to allow for full homogenization of all Bristol stool scale types. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce the concept of neutrality at the point of stabilization. So, in essence, preserving the in vivo microbiome profile. Uh, what we did, we, we have a linear picoA plot here, um, where the moral of the story is the closer to the fresh samples on the left, the better. And you could see that out of the three omnigene gut samples, two actually overlap, and, and it's, it's close to the minus 80 um, uh, frozen samples as well. Whereas the unstabilized samples, after 14 days at ambient temperature, they're all the way out to the right. Uh, that's the equivalent of collecting from your neighbor. It's a completely different uh, profile after 14 days than at the point of collection. Uh, what that means is with Omnigene Gut, it demonstrates a neutral reproducible microbiome profile and it shows that samples stored in Omnigene Gut are similar to samples that are frozen at minus 80 and fresh samples as well. Now, when we look at the, uh, the, the same data represented with Bray Curtis distances, we show that, uh, again, the Omnigene Gut samples after 14 days show no significant difference between the profile through beta diversity uh, as a frozen sample. Whereas again, the unstabilized sample is completely different. It's completely shifted from the other two uh, gold standards. Now, speaking of returning samples to the lab, uh, when we look at the different steps in the value chain, uh, you'll need to transport your valuable material from one location to the next. And as highlighted on the previous slide, the bulky box versus the slim envelope is, a cru is crucial at that stage for cost savings and for simplicity. Again, the sample must be robust enough to survive different exposures during shipping. And we have data that we will be sharing on our website in the future uh, on the changes in temperature and humidity during shipping. To simulate this, uh, we had samples exposed to 50 degrees Celsius for one day, for 37 degrees for three days, uh, along with multiple freeze-thaw cycles. So when you look at Omnigene gut, the Omnigene gut samples, they showed high molecular weight DNA with no degradation. So, once you have the samples, you have to get them back to the lab. Now that you have them in the lab, the norm when working with frozen samples is to dissect a smaller piece from the bulk sample and weigh it prior to extraction. Whereas, with a liquid homogenized sample, this allows you to then pipette the sample directly and skip these additional steps. Uh, it also allows for automation. Once ready for sequencing, we're at the stage where we're at the end cycle of the garbage in, garbage out process. And it's, it, it's the opposite with Omnigene. You could imagine you're putting the, the most premium oil in your 1997 Ford Pinto. Um, with, with our sample, you know that it's the highest quality that's going in through the input, and you'll have the highest quality data at the output stage. So, 
Again, we're showing data confirming that you will get reproducible results. As mentioned at the start of the presentation of the webinar, uh, there has been uh, some difficulty in reproducing results from one, uh, from one experiment to the next. However, with our samples, you know that the reproducibility is high. And we show that in comparison with the gold standard, which is processing fresh within three hours, and also freezing at minus 80. So our sample, the Omnigene gut sample, is interchangeable with these gold standards. Whereas, if you look at the unstabilized sample, uh, it gives you a low quality input. You might as well be collecting from your neighbor. I would like to finish with this quote from Carolyn Compton. If we put the wrong stuff into the front end of our analytic pipeline, will pollute the scientific literature with incorrect data that will take us a long time to sort out. sort out. This is a crisis that requires disruptive innovation. So please contact me to go into more detail on the data that was presented and uh, if you want to discuss some experimental or pilot study designs as well. Thank you.